Access 2016 allows you to create a self-signed digital certificate. That way when you're done coding and creating the macros and you want to let the users that you're going to hand this off to know that the content is safe and secure, go ahead and digitally sign the database. So to go ahead and create that digital signature that we can attach to the database and digitally sign it, let's come down here and open up Windows Explorer by right-clicking on the Start button, going to Open Windows Explorer, and over here in the navigation pane, let's click on the computer. And then over to the right, let's open up the C drive, double click, and double click on the program files folder. And then let's go down to Microsoft Office, double click. And then I'm only going to go so far before I say, OK, now it's time to do the search. And we're going to search for S-E-L-F-C-E-R-T for self-cert. Then hit the Enter key on the keyboard. And it's right there, self-cert executable program. So when you double click on that, there you go. This is how you can create your digital certificate and thereby digitally signing the database. But first of all, the certificate. Now it tells you that when you do a self-sign, which is what we're creating here, because it might be a forgery, it'll give other people a warning when they open the file that contains a macro project that is self-signed saying, hey, the original could be a forgery. And so a self-signed certificate is only for personal use. If you need an authenticated code signing certificate for signing commercial or broadly distributed macros, you will need to contact a certification authority, which you can do so by clicking here. There are some recommended certificate authorities. And let's click on that to open it up. And scroll down to find, well, I use Komodo. You can use whatever you like, but it's recommended. Click on that. And it's going to redirect to komodo.com. And let's go ahead and scroll down because when it comes to doing signing, like for coding, even though it says online, let me go ahead and click Get Now because what I want to show you here is the code signing. And you get two options to choose from. Let's just go ahead and click on Code Signing so you can compare between the two. So when it comes to code signing, like with our Access Database and macro codes, and you want to be able to say, hey, this is truly for me, and it should be trusted because I did it, and it's not from somebody else who forged my name that is pretending that it's from me when it's really not. So you can go ahead and compare and contrast between the two options here, and then you can go ahead and follow the directions and install it on the computer, and then once you do that, let's go ahead and close out of here and close out of all tabs, and then I'll show you how you can go ahead and digitally sign it. But first, let's go ahead and create our own digital certificate and not one from a certificate authority by coming down here and typing in my name, Kurt Kershaw. And then that's it. Click Okie Dokie and it says, hey, we successfully created this. Okie Dokie. And then we can go ahead and close out of here. And then to sign it or to add that digital certificate to this database, come backstage, click on File, go down to Save As. And it's right there. It's called the Package and Sign package the database and apply a digital signature. So it's going to wrap it up in a bundle and it'll have our signature applied to it. That is, after I select it and click on Save As or I double click on it, which certificate do I want to sign with? Well, this one's a personal one. So if I go ahead with it select and click Okie Dokie, it says it's not fit for code signing. So please choose another. OK. So let's go ahead and go back, File, Save As, and Package and Sign, double click. And the other one is a self-signed certificate, so it's only good for basically verifying the authenticity of this on this computer. It's not for mass distribution, as we just read. In any case, go ahead and select it, click Okie Dokie, and then before it actually signs it, it wants to package and then sign it or attach the signature to the package. So it's going to package it in a different extension. The original is ACCDB. This one's ACCDC. And the extra little C is to let you know that it contains a certificate or a signature, as the C is for certificate. So let's go ahead and create this on our desktop and close out so we can compare and contrast between the two. So here's the original and here's the digitally signed one. Hey, great. You can see the extension ACCDC as opposed to ACCDB. So you can see it's also got this cute little ribbon that says, hey, it's digitally signed. When you hover over it, it says Microsoft Access Signed Package. Double click. And it says a potential security concern has been identified. Note the digital signature is valid, but the signature is from a publisher whom you have not chosen to trust. Do you want to go ahead and trust this person? 
you could say yes and trust everything from this particular publisher, which, well, it's just from me, this computer here. Or you can just go ahead and say, nah, let's just open it up. And when it opens it, it says, okay, I'm unpackaging it now from the ACCDC to the ACCDB. So then we can go ahead and say, well, I already have this on the desktop, so let's just call this the one that was digitally signed, as it were, and save it as such and click okie dokie. So we can close out and let's explain it this way. So here we go. We had the original that we digitally signed and packaged, and then when we got it, we double clicked to open it up, and to see it, it had to unpackage, unzip it into its, well, original file, which we renamed and didn't overwrite the original here before we digitally signed it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.